Today's video, I wanted to talk about why PlayStation gamers don't mind paying $70 for games and why they actually don't mind a lot of the fees I talked about in a video uh, quite recently. Some great commenters actually came in and had some really, really interesting insight. And actually, it was it was quite simple. Let's go over that and let's sort of talk about the conversations we've had. So first things first, I've wanted to make this video for a while, and it's sort of about the two strategies between two companies, Sony's strategy versus the Xbox strategy. There's some terms in marketing. Um, there's a few different strategies. You can go for a market penetration strategy, which is where you kind of try and sell to your already biggest users. There is market development strategy. I feel like both companies are currently doing this. And according to the website I was reading, it says the efforts to expand sales by selling current products in new markets. So both companies have been expanding into new markets. I think PlayStation has gone into VR, but Xbox hasn't. And then of course they're talking globally into new markets, right? Uh, number three was product development strategy. PlayStation is at the research stage of this based on that earnings call not that long ago. They've dumped a ton of money into uh, researching new services that they can develop. And I feel like Xbox is at the implementation stage. So Xbox currently is, uh, they've implemented xCloud. It's in beta. You can go to xbox.com and play their cloud services. They have this uh, cross buy sort of thing. Well, like Game Pass is a good example. xCloud is a good example. Uh, their various consoles, including the Series S and the Series X, and then their their previous um, consoles that they're figuring out how to use xCloud to bring their old games to. Xbox for product development, I feel like Xbox is further along, but that doesn't mean Sony isn't doing anything. Sony is at the research stage. So let's let's read what this website says about this, and then we'll get into the comments after that. Creating new products to sell to existing customers, a product development strategy is a common marketing strategy among firms that can leverage their relationships with existing customers. Cable television companies have expanded their offerings into internet and telephone services, research and development activities play a dominant role in this strategy. The time required to develop and test a new, pro new products may be long, but once a product is developed, creating awareness, interest and availability should be relatively rapid because the firm already has a relationship with customers. A product development strategy is also riskier than a market penetration strategy because the necessary product may not be possible to develop at least at a cost acceptable to customers or the product developed does not match the needs of customers. So I feel like Sony is, they're at the research phase. They're trying to figure out how to implement something, but maybe they don't have the same sort of capital that Xbox has because Xbox has Microsoft at their back. So they basically have a blank check, right? Sony has to be a little bit smarter with their investments. And they've done that expertly with acquiring companies like Insomniac that have just boosted their portfolio massively. Finally, there's the diversi diversification strategy. And I think Xbox just nails this one. I don't, I wouldn't say that Sony has necessarily done this. I think they've kind of gone all in on, on PS5, um, on they, they've taken the leap, like many companies have, by the way. A lot of people pointed out that I don't call out EA, Activision, uh, Ubisoft for raising their prices to $70. That's because that sort of happened before this channel really took off. So I was calling it out more on Unlocked, but you are right. Yes, a lot of companies do that. And it, it isn't something I love. I don't love that games are seventy dollars. I, I that's a whole different video though. I, I feel like I've sort of talked about that a lot. Also, let's talk about the diversification strategy here for a second. So this is what Xbox is doing: X Cloud, uh, Game Pass. You can purchase games at retail. They have two different console SKUs that you can choose from. Um, they're offering a lot of options, whereas PlayStation, they basically have the PS5 and they have the PS4 generation of gamers, right? And that's it. I feel like Xbox has more options. Maybe for PlayStation, you could also include PlayStation Now in that. And uh, the way they've diversified, they have PS Now and they have the PS Now uh, collection set of games. So they're doing some things, but I think the diversification strategy of what Xbox has been doing has been really intriguing to so many more people because they've been really, really interested in um, sort of the, it's new, right? It's not really something that has been done tremendously well. And Xbox seems to be doing Game Pass and streaming well, at least for 
the short term. But anyway, I kind of want to get back to why PlayStation gamers don't mind paying $70. That's just some marketing stuff that I read. I'm not a marketing expert. It was like the second website I looked up, but I found it interesting because it did sort of speak to a lot of the things that we've been discussing on the channel lately. So getting to the point, I apologize. I th I'm starting to see, and I, I meant to make this video a while ago, PlayStation is Apple. You pay a premium price for Apple, but you you have this confidence, at least I'm an Apple user, you know, you have this confidence in the fact that you know you're getting a quality product when you buy Apple stuff. Sure, the phone is locked down more. Uh, it's more difficult to like change out your glass if you break your glass or whatever. Just, just like uh, the PlayStation is marginally more difficult to upgrade the hard drive for. That's not a negative. That's just their strategy, right? They, they have a different strategy. And the one thing that people know they're getting with PlayStation is if you spend $70 on a game, PlayStation gamers feel confident in the quality of that product, especially games from PlayStation Studios. And that's why they don't mind paying the $70. And then on Xbox, Xbox I compare to Android sort of, I think there's a lot more options in how you can interface with your Xbox platform, especially because they're on PC. You can you can play all the games on PC day and date. You can you have uh, ease of access with Game Pass and there's the whole diversification strategy that we talked about, right? But going back to that previous video I talked about where PlayStation mad fans are mad about these additional fees. Now, this really riled up the Internet, but I really, really want to interact with the people who understood where I was coming from. Thank you for not uh, twisting my words, but actually attempting to answer my questions and give me your point of view, because it was tremendously valuable to me. And I do feel like I have a better understanding of where you're coming from. And to all the people out there who like thought I was coming from somewhere nasty or decided to twist my words. Just why? Like, what's what's your goal? Like, I, I asked pointed questions in there to the audience to uh, try and have a better understanding. And now I do thanks to these excellent users. So they're going to be rewarded because I'm going to read their questions. So Sapporo, uh, Sony knows exactly what they're doing. Everything attached to their console is literally printing money. I'm starting to seriously believe they're not selling PS5 as a console, but rather an experience. That's exactly what I'm talking about with the Apple strategy, right? You have to pay to use features, pay to get next-gen graphics and frame rates, pay for cloud saves. I think they probably would have charged for back and, pan and people would have paid if they could have gotten away with it. Now, I don't know about that from Sapporo, but he, he, he sort of gets at the heart of what this whole thing is about. The PlayStation 5 is selling an experience. You know on the PlayStation 5, if you spend $70 on a game, you are going to get a premier experience. Now, look, regardless of how you feel about Sony, what's the last game that was just a bomb? I I don't know. Ratchet & Clank was excellent. Uh, Returnal was excellent. A even Astro's, Astro's Playroom that came with the console was an excellent game. Uh, we know God of War is going to be great. I have high confidence in Horizon Forbidden West being a great game. Their first party games are going to be excellent. And it's as simple as that. That's why people don't mind paying. And, and uh, Edster echoed that sentiment. Premium console equals premium prices. That seems to be Sony's thinking. It's up to them what business model they use. Gamers will need to make up their own minds. I'm Xbox, so I've made my bed. So Edster is an Xbox fan, but I did hear from a lot of PlayStation fans also who are just like, I don't mind paying that extra money because I know I'm getting an awesome game. And it's just that simple. They don't mind the extra fees because they get an extra product. What I've been trying to echo in my videos, and I think I come off a lot better when I'm not all riled up, but um, I sort of felt like that they were just getting too much but PlayStation gamers don't feel that way. So who am I, like, what am I, what is my goal of the videos? A lot of people, like the video has, even though it was bombed, it still has an 89.2 positive rating. Most of my videos have a 94% positive rating. I think I averaged in the 92, which is insane uh, for a YouTube channel. So I'm definitely speaking to people when I make these videos. And a lot of them are PlayStation gamers who are like, yeah, I would like a little bit more of a balance here in terms of value for what I'm getting. So that's that's the only thing I was trying to ask. And again, uh, thank you to everybody who left these comments. So uh, Blady said, PlayStation fans don't mind paying 10, X, 10 bucks for quality games. Unfortunately, Xbox doesn't have any games, so nothing to complain about. So a little bit of a dig at Xbox there, but uh, whatever, that's what Blady has to say. 
yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would almost agree with him. Not that Xbox doesn't have games, but they don't have like a God of War right now, right? Maybe Gears of War 5 comes close to that bar, in my opinion, um, to something like a God of War in terms of quality. But we are about to sort of change that perception with games like Halo Infinite and then uh, Forza Horizon 5 coming around the bend. Sorry for the car pun. And I, I do think that perception is going to change. And a lot of these tones of like... Um, I'm all PlayStation, I'm all in. I think once, everybody here is a gamer, right? I think once gamers start to realize, hey, there's a lot of good stuff on Xbox and maybe they have a year to get there, then they'll be getting that second console. And this will also be the time when Xbox reduces their prices. I know the same thing's gonna happen for Xbox users. Xbox users will start looking at that PlayStation library and say, man, God of War 2, God of War Ragnarok's on there, uh, Horizon was excellent, Returnal was excellent, I can get all those games on discount or part of PlayStation Plus, and they'll probably finally pick up their second console. That's why I think the whole thing is sort of gonna balance out in the long run, It'll be interesting to see where we land in like seven or so years. Uh, Michael Lynch said, uh, you said it right there, Destin. Sony have phenomenal games. It's up to each individual to decide if it's a product, if a product is worth it to them for the price. Because Sony games are so good to me, they are totally worth that 10 extra dollars. You can sit there and say it's not worth it to you, but it sounds like you're trying to convince everybody that they are wrong for feeling how they feel. Well, I'm glad Michael Lynch said that because I'm not trying to tell you you're wrong for liking PlayStation. I get it. Like, they have amazing games. I have a lot of questions for PlayStation about their business practices, about what their answer is for why the, the games are $10 more, why they charge $10 more for the upgrades, et cetera, et cetera. Those are questions that I want to ask like an executive at Sony. I'll probably never get that opportunity, but if I do, I think they're important questions to ask because I would like them to be answered. And you know, even though I don't agree with it, I would ask Microsoft about the Microsoft Flight Simulator stuff. Like for me, I see it as a great service for users, but a lot of users have pointed out that they feel like it's it's sort of Microsoft uh, shoehorning in some extra microtransactions. So it's an important question to ask. Even if I personally don't agree with the question, it's a question that should be asked so that they have a chance to respond and at least give their stance on it. And then you can sort of react about that, if that makes sense. So Michael, thank, thank you for the comment. And thank you to all these commenters, by the way, for coming into my comment section. There were a lot of people who just came in and they just wanted to take sort of a dump or be mad at me or say they're unsubscribing. Look, if you're unsubscribing, you don't need to like make a big scene before you leave, shut the door behind you, just go. Like, I, it's fine. I do this for fun in my spare time. I've set a challenge for myself to, to do a video a day for a year and I'm doing pretty well. Um, if you're unhappy with my stance or just mad and you want to take a dump, like there's not really anything of value that we're going to get from that exchange, right? You're going to be mad. I'm going to read it and feel like crap, you know, like it's not going to make me feel good. And maybe that's your goal, but, um, it's just, there's no valuable exchange. So when I, when I make a video that pisses you off and I ask a point in question, like, Hey, maybe you could help me understand this. I'm genuinely asking to get a better understanding. And thank you so much to these people who left these comments because it did help me better understand because we actually had a conversation and some people just, yeah, anyway, I've sort of made my point. So I'm fought up. This one really struck home with me. He said, I'm sorry, Dustin, but what do you want PlayStation fans to do? The barrier of entry is spending money, which is optional. Am I reading this incorrectly? It's been showing that people are willing to pay for remakes and remastered games. Game Pass is awesome, but why should the market leader copy the Xbox model if it's working for them? Excellent questions. Excellent. Like he's being critical. He's being critical of the video that I made, but he makes me think about my stances in a way that I really, really appreciate. So he's, what do I want PlayStation gamers to do? I, I realize that you can't really do much. Um, I would say vote for your wallet, but of course you want that premier experience, right? I, th I think if you're truly upset and a lot of the commenters are upset, I think you need to be a little bit vocal about it. Just be like, Hey, I don't appreciate this $10 thing. Cause Sony does adjust their stances on things. I think like, 
I don't even mind the $70 thing because I sort of get it. We are sort of at a point where things are going to inflate, right? I don't love it. I don't love that because I go back to young Destin, young Destin, who was poor, right? I had n no money. I couldn't have, I could get like two games a year, one game a year. I would do my paper out and I bought two. I remember the two, two of the first games that I bought. I, I ended up getting a Sega Genesis and I got Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I love Sonic the Hedgehog growing up and uh, Sonic Pinball was one of the other first games that I bought. And I, I loved those games. I figured out the cheat codes. I figured out the music and everything like that. So I, un I just want to say that I understand what it's like when you have a limited budget and you have to make very careful decisions about what you're going to purchase, right? So I had to work very hard for my games when I was growing up. And I think about that little kid, Destin. And if there was a service like what Xbox offers with Game Pass that is roundly uh, celebrated, I would be I would be through the roof. I would definitely subscribe to that and and the whole rewards thing. Hell, let's say Little Destin was a PlayStation fanboy, so eventually I got a Super Nintendo and I was playing a lot of. I really loved comic books growing up, so I played all the like good X Men games on on the super nintendo and super mario world i did like all the moons and all the crazy stuff but let's say super nintendo equates to playstation and sega genesis equates to xbox you can take it take for that however you want it um the point i'm trying to make is if i was a fan of either of those services i absolutely would have been subscribed to both playstation now and xbox game pass or either or whatever platform i happen to be on like i i switched halfway through and then eventually Eventually, I just kind of skipped the PS1, the N64 era, and I came back during the Xbox, GameCube, PS2 era, and PS2 was like my main console. And I I sort of go off on a tangent here, but what should PlayStation fans do? I don't think you should just sit idly by and just be like, yeah, $70 games are great. Um, but yeah, there's not much that you can do about it, right? It makes a good point. There isn't anything you can do. I can make videos like this where I say, hey, a lot of PlayStation gamers are not cool with these extra fees. And then I can continue to ask those questions like, what What do you tell the kid who's doing a paper out and he can buy one game a year, right? One video game a year. And uh, on Xbox, maybe he can maybe he can stretch that to two, but on PlayStation, that $70, it just puts him into a territory where he can't get to. What do you say to that kid? You know, cause, cause I think about when I was there and I didn't have a lot of cash anyway. So I realize you can't do much, but that's why I make those videos. Cause if I, if I didn't have the cash, I would want somebody asking those questions. Right. And I hope anybody in the industry will, um, the barrier entry is spending money, which is optional. I'm reading this correctly. Oh, yeah. So obviously, like, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. If you have the money, you don't care about the $70, whatever. I hope the whole paper rod analogy thing gives you a little bit of a perspective of where I'm coming from. Um, it's been shown that people are willing to pay for remakes and remastering game, game passes on. But why should the market leader? Co oh, this is the good part. Why should the market leader copy the Xbox model if it's working for them? Uh, the only thing I would say there is why should they copy the Xbox model if their model is working for them. They don't have to, but if they did, they would offer their users a markedly better experience. And it doesn't have to be a carbon copy of Game Pass. I think actually their solution to competing with Game Pass is they're going to do something with PlayStation now in the next few months to offer a little bit of a better service. And um, the other thing was, Oh, they're collections. They're collections as part of PlayStation Plus. I think those are two very simple things that they can do to address the issue. I did not think this would be a 19 minute video, but uh, there it is. I just I wanted to uh, talk about the whole thing and all these comments I got and why I feel like PlayStation gamers uh, don't care about paying $70. I think a lot of them do. But like, what are you going to do? You can't do anything. That's how much the games are. And I mean, when Ubisoft, EA and Activision have all decided, yeah, all our games are 70, there, there's not much you can do. Well, I mean, for EA, I guess you could wait a little bit and then uh, play it on Game Pass or buy buy PlayStation games at a discount. You know, that's what a lot of people say that they do. But uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to all those people who uh, engaged in good faith and actually had some great answers. It really made me sort of think about the whole situation. And, and it really is simple. 
Like, regardless of how I feel, there are a lot of gamers out there who come at it with this stance. Anyway, yeah. So in this video, I in this channel, I like to talk about things that are going on in the industry and what I'm thinking about them. And sometimes you get a video like that last one where I'm a little bit hot headed and then I have a great weekend and I come back on Monday and I'm feeling good. And I talk to you about this one. Um, yeah. So thank you for the great conversations. I'm going to get out of here for today, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was longer than my normal videos. It's just me sort of rambling about the whole, the whole situation and uh, the $70 games and everything one more time. But thank you for watching. Hopefully this has a good retention rate <laughs> and I don't blow it. I, I hope I kept your interest. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these sort of videos, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell to know when the videos post. I post every day at 7 a.m. If you want to become a member, memberships are turned on. It's a thing YouTube offers. And I try and post a video every day at 7 a.m. And I try and do those without ads for members. And of course, yes, I do have some merch like coffee cups and pillows. So if you, if you like either of those things, maybe consider one of those. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Uh, I, I like this video. I'm, I think, I think it was a great conversation and I really, really appreciate that. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you for the next one, everybody.